السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Hello everyone. Welcome to lecture 36 Organic Chemistry 2. Today we will continue on carboxylic acid derivatives and we will cover their reactions. Glazing condensation. The glazing condensation results when an ester molecule undergoes nucleophilic acyl substitution with an enolate ion serving as a nucleophile. Self-condensation of ethyl acetate is an example. Under basic condition using ethoxide ethanol gives keto ester enolate which upon acidification with dilute acid gives beta keto ester ethyl acetoacetate so forming this new bond and here is beta keto ester ethyl acetoacetate the mechanism started with acid base reaction where ethoxide will act as a base and here we have alpha hydrogen acidic hydrogen so it forms the enolate and ethanol watch very carefully the bka of the ethanol 16 the bka of ethyl acetate is 24 so the equilibrium will be shifting this way the left right but we have enolate in the medium a little bit will react with another molecule of ethyl acetate okay so it's nucleophilic acyl substitution addition followed by elimination of ethyl oxide again to form the beta keto ester here we have hydrogen remember that this reaction is at equilibrium okay now BKA is 11. BKA of the ethanol is 16. So it will be shift again forward to the product. It will be shifting, taking the reaction to the product. So this step is essential to move on. Okay, remember forming the beta keto ester okay then acid base reaction to form the salt is an important step then we isolate the the salt acidify with dilute acid to give the ester so this step is a driving force Ethoxide is used as a base in the condensation of ethyl acetate to avoid some unwanted side reactions. So, what side reaction would occur if the following bases were used? Sodium ethoxide A, B, sodium hydroxide. Well, we have taken what we call it transesterification. If we used different base than ethoxide so methoxide will act as a nucleophile add eliminate to give a new ester methyl ester if you have a mixture of ethyl ester and methyl ester in the medium then we are expecting to get a mixture of products of beta keto ester one is ethyl and one is vessel upon using sodium hydroxide we are make a saponification of the ester forming sodium acetate and the reaction will stop no further so glazing will not take place as the carbonyl no longer has a leaving group, 
this is not a leaving group. Okay? So there is no glazing reaction. You get only sodium acetate and that's it. Esters with only one hydrogen generally give poor yields in the glazing condensation. Propose a mechanism for glazing condensation of ethyl isobutyrate and explain why a poor yield is obtained. Here we have ethyl isobutyrate, which has alpha hydrogen in here. So the first step will be deprotonation, forming the enolate, which, okay, of course, present in resonant structures. Okay, the anion here, the enolate, will attack on another molecule. Addition to form the tetrahedral intermediate elimination to kick the isoxide out. Here, this product has no alpha hydrogen. No alpha hydrogen. According, there is no driving force toward completion. It's at equilibrium still. That's why we get a very poor yield. So, one, we have hindered in this step hindered nucleophilic site. This is one. Two, this product has no hydrogen, alpha hydrogen, to deprotonate to drive the reaction forward. That's why we get boreal, very boreal. Show what ester would undergo glazing condensation to be the following beta keto ester. Well, this is beta keto ester. This is alpha beta bond. We cut this. This will be the Samsung and this will be the synthetic equivalent ethyl propanoid and this part will be the source of enolate negative part. So this will be the positive and this will be the negative. And this is ethyl propionate, which means that it's self-condensation. It's self-condensation of ethyl propanoid. Okay, here we have molecules, two molecules of ethyl propanoate. One will act as source of H, the enolate, okay? And this carbon, carbon and other molecule will be the acceptor of the nucleophile to form the alpha-beta bond, ketoester enolate, which is driving the reaction forward. Then we acidify this salt to give the final product. Dickman condensation is an internal glazing condensation of diester. So we have here diester in the same molecule like diethyl adivate. This carbon will be the source of the enolate and this one will be the acceptor. So the first step acid-base reaction to form the enolate which attacks on the carbonyl of the ester. Addition followed by elimination to give the cyclic. Here we have alpha H. The driving force is the formation of the salt. Then acidify the product to give the beta-keto ester 
ethyl 2 oxocyclobenzene carboxylate. Determine which of the following keto ester can be prepared by Dickman condensations and rose starting diester. In here, we have here alpha, beta, gamma. So, this molecule classified as gamma keto ester. This molecule is not beta keto ester, so it cannot be prepared by Dickman condensation. What about this one? This one is here is alpha to the ester, beta. In here, so what we do is just cut in here between the alpha and beta bond. This will be the inolate source, alpha, and this will be the acceptor. So this is, will be the positive. According, we add here on this one the ester functionality, and here we add the H. So this is the starting material. For this molecule, we have here alpha, beta, So we can cut in here alpha and beta to form this will be the negative and this will be the acceptor of the enolate. Okay. Uh oh we have here C double bond O. We can create an ion in the media while we have ketonic functionality. So this will be wrong. We have to protect this carbonyl first. So our starting material will be, yes, the diester, but we have to protect this in the form of ketal. That's correct. Two cyclic products are possible from the Dickman intramolecular clasin condensation shown below, but only one of them actually forms. Describe the, and explain briefly the outcome of this reaction. This is a molecule, diester, right, under the basic condition, sodium ethoxide, followed by acidification. What do you expect will be the product? Here we have ester with alpha in here. So, we can say, okay, with sodium isoxide acid base, and we form with this enolate. This enolate will attack on the second ester to this species to form this cyclic okay, product. But this carbon has no alpha hydrogen to deprotonate, to be the driving force. So, here we have product with no alpha hydrogen to go forward. So this reaction will not go smoothly. On the other hand, the alpha, the other alpha hydrogen, okay, will form the enolate, attacks on here, other nucleophilic acyl substitution, addition, elimination, Okay, to form this product with alpha hydrogen. So what we expect? We expect deprotonation to form the salt, push the reaction to completion, then we acidify that with dilute acid to give the final product. The product of the first condensation lacks the alpha hydrogen between its two carbonyl groups. This molecule is not isolated under glazing condensation condition because the equilibrium associated with its formation cannot be driven to completion by deprotonation. Only the product of the second condensation process is obtained. Crossed glazing condensation. What do you mean by crossed glazing condensation. This type of reaction occurs between two different esters, 
particularly when one of the ester has alpha hydrogen needed to form the enolate and the other one does not. The ester without alpha hydrogen serves as electrophilic component. So let's see in here. No alpha hydrogen in here, while we have here alpha hydrogen, so this will be the enolate and this will be the acceptor. So this will be alpha and this is will be the beta. This is will be the alpha and this is will be the beta keto ester. Conclusion. To determine the starting materials for glazing condensation, mentally reverse the condensation by adding element of alcohols across either of the carbon-carbon bonds between the carbonyl groups. Because there are two such bonds, we will generally find two possible disconnections, two possible disconnections, labeled A and B, okay? and two corresponding sets of starting material. Let's see. Here we have beta keto ester. We can cut in here between this carbonyl and this carbon. We add hydrogen in here and OR in here, element of alcohol. So this will be the enolate component and this will be the acceptor, carbonyl acceptor. Okay. Or we can cut in this bond here. Again, we give here the OR, and this one will get the H. So this will be the acceptor, and here will be the enolate. Let's apply this. Predict the products from crossed glazing condensation of the following pairs of ester. Indicate which combination are poor choice for crossed glazing condensation. Here we have ester with no alpha hydrogen. Okay. And we have here an ester with alpha hydrogen. So if we treat this picture with base, okay, this will be the enolate and this will be the carbonyl acceptor. Well, that's a product. You have here two different esters, both have the alpha hydrogen, so that will be very poor choice, because you will get a mixture of products. Here we have the alpha source of enolate, and this is the carbonyl acceptor. Treat that with sodium nisoxide, give this product. If we reverse, this will be the enolate sort, source, and this will be the carbonyl acceptor, we'll get this product, different products. If two pieces, same molecule of ester, will react together, again, self condensation will give the third product. For methyl acetate, again, self-condensation will get fourth product. So we'll end up with a mixture. So that's not a good choice. This is a poor choice. What about this one? Well, there is no alpha hydrogen in this one. And this one has alpha hydrogen. So this will be the enolate source and this will be the acceptor, and we get only one compound. It's Show how cross-glazing condensation could be used to prepare the following esters. Well, this molecule, we can look to it as beta keto ester, alpha and beta, so we cut between this bond, okay? And the sensor will be this carbon with positive charge, and this is a negative charge. So this will take the hydrogen, and then this will take the OR. Okay, so 
this part gets OR and this one gets hydrogen and it's SL ester so we use sodium ethoxide and then acidify the product and we get the coupling between this carbon enolate and this carbon as acceptor and the product okay we can look into the other way around this is will be alpha and this is will be beta and we cut in here okay alpha beta then this will be the enolate source and this will be the acceptor so this will take the OR and this this will take the OR and this one will take the hydrogen and if we start with these pieces okay di ethyl carbonate okay then treat this again with sodium ethoxide since we have ethyl esters okay and then we treat the product with, with acidified water to get the product so this will be the enolate we come in here nucleophilic acyl substitution and that's a product okay. here we have symmetric molecules so we can say anyone alpha beta cut in here we get this senson and that one okay this again will take the hydrogen and then this one will take the OR so if we start with these pieces we get I get that carbonate with this one, sodium methoxide, sodium ethoxide, and then acidification. We get the product, no problems, good yield. Cross deplasing condensation between ketones and esters are also possible. Ketones are more acidic than ester, pK of 20 for the ester is around 24, so the ketone is more acidic. So, ketones components is more likely to deprotonate and serve as enolate component in the reaction. If we react this one with that one, this is have an alpha H and this has an alpha H. But which one is more acidic? This one is more acidic. Then this one will be the source of enolate. And then attack on here, nucleophilic acyl. A substitution reaction to give the beta keto beta di ketone beta di ketone if we have here ketone and here we have an ester di methyl oxalate so this will be again the source of enolate under the basic condition and then this will be the acceptor nucleophilic acyl substitution reaction it's R and this we get Diketo, diketo ester. Ketone, ketone, diketo ester. Alright? See you next lecture.